So this lesson is on sampling distributions for sample means. The last lesson we did was sampling distributions for sample proportions. Um, just a few reminders that the mean of your proportions was the, um, the sampling proportion and that your standard deviation of your proportion was a square root of PQ over N. All that's on your formula sheet. Remember, you need to focus on when these P's and Q's need hats and when they don't. Um, remember that your standard deviation requires the 10% condition and that also to be able to do a normal approximation um, you need to make sure that the large counts condition holds true which is okay so those are the highlights from proportions so now let's see how this changes when we talk about means suppose that X is the mean of a simple random sample of size n drawn from a large population with mean mu. Now that mu means that that's the average of the population and standard deviation sigma. The mean of the sampling distribution of x bar is mu sub x bar equals mu. Now let's make sure that this terminology makes sense. This is the mean of the sampling distribution. So we all take a bunch of samples. Everybody takes one sample. We bring all these samples together. If we each have all these different samples, we can each have our own X bar. We take all the X bars together and we find the average of all of our X bars that becomes the mean of the population. And the mean of the sampling distribution of X bar is mu sub x bar equals mu. You need to be able to um, communicate with those symbols and Greek letters. The standard deviation of a sampling distribution of x bar is sigma sub x bar equals sigma over the square root of n. So this is different. Remember for proportions it was the square root of PQ over N. So this is sigma, so that's the standard deviation of the population over the square root of your sample size. But again, as long as the 10% condition is satisfied. And again, that standard deviation formula is on your formula sheet. But I think the biggest thing you need to focus on as we move forward with means is making sure that you keep proportions and means clear and separate in your mind. The sample mean X bar is an unbiased estimator of the population mean. The values of X bar are less spread out for larger samples. Another way to say that is the larger my sample, the smaller the variability. Their standard deviation decreases at the rate of square root of N. So you must take a sample four times as large to cut the standard deviation in half. Remember, if this is over the square root and we do a sample that's four times as large, it makes sense that that would cut the, stand, the standard deviation in half. Notice that these facts about the mean and standard deviation of X bar are true no matter what shape the population distribution has. Let's make sure we understand what that means. Notice that these facts about the mean and the standard deviation of X bar are true no matter what shape the population distribution has. So nowhere in there did it say that if we are normal, all this holds true. All of those facts hold true no matter what shape the population distribution has. AP exam tip, notation, P hat, X bar, P, mu, sigma, mu sub P hat, sigma sub p hat, mu sub x bar, and sigma sub x bar all have specific and different meanings. Either use the notation correctly or don't use it at all. You can expect to lose credit if you use incorrect notation. If you tell me x bar when it's really a sample lean distribution and you're finding mu sub x bar but you write x bar, 
you will lose points. Uh, if you're talking about um, a proportion and you use X bar instead of P hat, you'll lose points. So make sure that you understand that this is the proportion of a sample. This is the mean of a sample. This is the proportion of the population. This is the mean of the population. Standard deviation of the population. This is the mean of a sampling distribution of proportions. This is the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of proportions. This is the mean of a sampling distribution of means. And this is the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of means. All right, this one stinks. Sulfur compounds such as uh, DMS are sometimes present in wine. DMS causes off odors in wine. So winemakers want to know the odor threshold, the lowest concentration of DMS that the human nose can detect. Nobody wants to produce a wine that stinks. Extensive studies have found that the DMS odor threshold of adults follows a distribution with a mean of 25 micrograms per liter and a standard deviation of 7 micrograms per liter. Suppose we take a simple random sample of 10 adults. Now, notice that's a very small sample. And determine the mean odor threshold, X bar, for the individuals in this sample. What is the mean of the sampling distribution of X bar? Explain. Okay, you just need some ter terminology. The mean of the sampling distribution of X bar equals mu. And mu is 25 micrograms per liter. Now, it says explain because X bar is an unbiased estimator of mu. Take a second and write that down, but then pause the video and think about that. X bar is an unbiased estimator of mu. Unbiased means I don't care how big your sample is. I don't care how many times you're going to take a sample. That X bar is an unbiased estimator of mu. What is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution? Okay. Don't get all kinds of excited and see standard deviation and jump into finding the standard deviation. Who is the gatekeeper for standard deviation? And that is your 10% condition. You want to write what you're doing, and then you want to write that formula, and then you want to plug in the information that you know. Little n is my sample size, and my sample size is 10. Now, we have to figure out what our big N is. I don't have a number, but we have to figure out what big N represents. If you go back and read, it just says that we're taking a simple random sample of adults. So I just have to write I don't know if these are US adults. I don't know if these are adults in the world. I don't know if they're adults in one particular town. But this word right here is super important. All adults in the population. Um, and we're going to assume that's true because it just means I would have to have 100 adults. Now I can find my standard deviation. But it's not just standard deviation. It's the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of means. So it's sigma sub X bar. If you just write sigma, you will lose points. So really practice. Going to write your formula. 
Again, that's on your formula sheet. Take a second and find your formula sheet and find where he is. Sigma of the population was 7. I have a sample size of 10. I have to go three decimal places and I have to label. Is the sample a normal distribution? If the population is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma, then the sampling distribution of x bar has a normal distribution with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma <coughs> over the square root of n, provided your 10% condition was met. Okay, so hold on a second. This says that if the population is normal with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma, then my sample and my sampling distribution will also be normal with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma over the square root of n provided the 10% condition said it was okay. I don't care how big your sample size is. You could have a terrible sample size of three people um, or three subjects or 10, just awful small samples. But if they tell you that the population is normally distributed, then whatever sample you take from that population, no matter how big or how small, it is always grandfathered in to be normal he sort of gets that seal of approval because he came from a normal population. So this is true no matter what the sample size is. Okay. <clears throat> young women's heights. The height of young women follows a normal distribution with a mean of 64.5 inches and a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. Find the probability that a randomly selected woman is taller than 66.5 inches and find the probability that the mean height of a simple random sample of 10 young women exceeds 66.5 inches. What's really important in the information they give you is that right there. And I highly recommend when you're doing a problem, and especially on the AP exam, that you underline that so that they can tell that you noticed that because that's really, really important. Okay, so for part A, I'm going to try to go slow enough so that not you can not only write but also take a second to digest. So that's why I'm going to kind of drag my feet a little bit. Okay, the height of young women follows a normal distribution with a mean. So I know that my mean is 64.5 inches. Always use units of measurement when you're talking about means and standard deviations. Not for proportions, but for means. 2.5. Okay, so that I know and I know it's a normal distribution. Okay, now let's talk about what we want. I want the probability that a randomly selected young woman is taller than 66.5 inches. So I want the probability. Now, I need a variable here. I have not defined any variables. They haven't defined any variables for me. So I'm going to use x, and I want x to be taller than 66.5 inches. But then immediately, because I've just used that x variable, I have to come up here and define it. I can't use a letter that hasn't been defined. So I'm going to let x, now what is x going to represent? Well, this is a height. So x is the height of, now let's read, probability that a randomly selected young woman. It is the height of a randomly selected 
young woman. Okay, again, let's go over what we've done so far. The first thing I did was I wrote what they gave me. And then I wrote what I wanted. And then I had to do this because I used a variable that had not been defined. So when you get a problem like this, always start with t taking the English and turning it into stats. What did they give me? And then taking the question and turning it into stats. What do I want? Okay. Well, guys, they told me we were normal. So I want the probability. Let's see. My average is 64.5. And I want to go 66.5 or higher. I want that. Okay, now let's think through this. Now I gave you some formulas. I gave you the formula for the mean of a sampling distribution and a sigma for a sampling distribution. But guys, we've only got one sample. I just want to know the probability that one randomly selected young woman is taller than 66.5 inches. So I'm not using that formula because I only want one one girl. Guys, if your n was 1, the square root of 1 is 1, that's not going to change your sigma at all. I'm just doing one person from the population. I'm not taking a sample. I'm going to select one woman, and I want the probability that she's taller than 66.5 inches. So I use this information. I don't need to change my mu. I don't need to change my standard deviation. I'm just going to normal CDF I'm going to go from 66.5 I'm going to infinity even though I know a person can't be infinitely tall I've got my mean and my standard deviation okay take a second type that in I went four decimal places. I can't remember why. Um, 0.212 would be fine if you went three decimal places. I don't know if it stops right after the nine or not. But for some reason, I went four decimal places. And then I'm going to put this in a nice little package with a bow on top. So this is where I write my sentence. And I state my answer, and then I just restate the question. So I'm going to say... The probability of choosing a young woman at random whose height exceeds 66.5 inches is about 21.19%. So again, I'm just stating, restating the question, and then I put my answer at the end of it. The probability of choosing a young woman at random whose height exceeds 66.5 inches is about 21.19%. Okay, now let's go back and let's read B and let's see how B is different. Okay, the difference between A and B is in B, I have a sample. Find the probability that the mean of my sample of 10 young women it seeks, it's exceeds 66.5 inches. So in part A, I didn't have a sample. I just picked one girl. 
from the population. Here, I'm going to pick a sample of 10 young women, and I want to know what's the probability that the average of that sample, a sampling distribution, it exceeds 66.5 inches. So in a lot of ways, this is going to be exactly the same, except my sigma is not going to be the same. Okay, so part B. This is a sampling distribution, which means I need a new sigma because the sample size is going to change my standard deviation. The smaller the standard devi the smaller your sample size, the bigger your standard deviation. The larger your sample size, the smaller your standard deviation. Okay, I now don't have mu. I have mu sub x bar. But we know from the previous slide that mu sub x bar equals mu. So that equals 64.5 inches. The reason is because x bar is an unbiased estimator of mu. Okay, before I go find my standard deviation, I have to use my 10% condition. Uh, my sample size is 10. And my population is all young women. The word all is the important word there. And that just means I have to have 100 young women. And I'm sure that's true. Now that I have verified the 10% condition, that allows me to find the standard deviation of my sampling distribution. So I'm going to write my formula. Always write your formula. And then I'm going to put in the population standard deviation over the square root of my sample size. You're going to go three decimal places and round correctly. Take a second, type that in, make sure you're cool. Now, do I need to interject the LCC in this problem? And the answer is no. It told me way back up at the top that the height of young women follows a normal distribution. If you take a sample from a population and that population is normal, this population has been deemed normal, then any sample you take from that any sample that you take small samples Big samples. All these samples that I take from this population are also normal. If he is normal, then anything you take from that population is also normal. You don't have to justify anything. So, we're going to come down here and we're going to write since population is normal, our sample is also normal. Now, we're going to talk about what you do if that's not the case, but for right now, that's fine. Okay, now, I want the probability that what? Before, it was the probability that X, this one person, this one girl, is greater than 66.5 inches. But read your question. Find the probability that the mean height of our sample exceeds 66.5 inches. So I want the probability that my X bar is greater than 66.5 inches.
our average was 64.5. We're going 66.5 and higher. I'm going to do a normal CDF from 66.5 to infinity. So far, identical to part A. My average is 64.5, still identical. Here's the kicker. My standard deviation is now 0.791. Now, we can type that in. Hold on just a second. That standard deviation is 0.791. Go back up and look here. Do you see how the standard deviation is different? It's the only piece that's different. When you have a sample that has a sample size, it will alter your standard deviation. Okay, so I'm going to type that in. And I get 0 0.00572. Now, I went five decimal places because I don't like zeros. Okay, now I want you to take a second. And I want you to write a lovely sentence that restates the question for part B and include your answer. So take a second and write what you think that sentence should be. Okay, this is what I have, and I'm literally just going to restate the question. The probability that the mean height of a simple random sample of 10 young women exceeds 66.5 inches is 0.572%. One more time. The probability that the mean height of a simple random sample of 10 young women exceeds 66.5 inches is 0.572%. Five seven two percent. They're literally just restating the question. Okay, so we've talked about if our population is normal, any sample I take from that population, no matter what size, that sample will be normal. Okay, what if they don't tell us that the population is normal? Then we have issues. Okay, so we have this, another acronym we get to learn. The Central Limit Theorem, the CLT, and you can reference it by the CLT. You don't have to write out Central Limit Theorem. If you draw a simple random sample of size n from any population with a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma, the CLT, the Central Limit Theorem, says that when n, that's your sample size, is large, the sample lean distribution of the sample mean x bar is approximately normal. Okay, one more time. I don't know anything about the population. I don't know that my population is normal. But if I draw a simple random sample of size n, when n is large, it says that I can be normal. Well, the question is, how large is large enough? Well, the stats gods got together and said, if the population distribution is far from normal, the sampling distribution of X bar will also be very non-normal if the sample size is small. Statisticians decide that a sample size of 30 is the magical number to invoke the CLT. So, ladies and gentlemen, if your population is not normal, but you pull a sample from that population that is 30 or higher, 
you can use a normal distribution to approximate that. But if you choose, if you pull a sample of 29, you cannot assume that it's normal. It has to be 30 or higher. Okay. What does the CLT say? Ask what the T CLT says. A student replies. As you take larger and larger samples from a population, the histogram of the sample values looks more and more normal. Is the student right? As you take larger and larger samples from a population, the histogram of the sample values looks more and more normal. Is the student right? No. The histogram of the sample values will look similar to the population distribution. The CLT says that the histograms of the sampling distribution of the sample mean will look more normal as the sample size increases. Okay. Let's look at this one. Another student says, as you take larger and larger samples from a population, the spread of the sampling distribution of the sample mean decreases. Okay, one more time. Another student says, as you take larger and larger samples from a population, the spread of the sampling distribution of the sample mean decreases. Is this student right? Guys, this is a true statement. As your sample size gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the variability, your standard deviation, gets smaller. The bigger the sample, the smaller, the, the, the less spread out your data is. That's a true statement. But the question was, is this what the CLT says? This is a correct statement about the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of X-bar, but this is not what the CLT says. The CLT addresses the shape of the sampling distribution, not the spread. The CLT addresses the shape. The CLT says you can use a normal distribution, whether it be spread out or not. It's the shape, not the spread. Now, I hope from these two examples you can see in your future some multiple choice questions that say which one of the following summarizes what the CLT says. So watch out for those in your homework and on your test review. Make sure you're super clear what the CLT says. You can assume it is a normal distribution, and that is the shape, normal, these two pictures right here, if your sample size is greater than 30, regardless of what the population distribution is. Okay. Servicing air conditioners, the last example. Your company has a contract to perform preventative maintenance on thousands of air conditioning units in a large city. Based on service records from the past year, the time in hours that a technician requires to complete the work follows a strongly right skewed distribution. Stop right there. What does that mean? That means that we are not normal. This is this whole part right here is talking about the population. The population data is not normal. We are strongly right skewed. With a mu of an hour and a standard deviation of an hour. In the coming week, your company will service a simple random sample of 70 
air conditioning units in the city. You plan to budget an average of 1.1 hours per unit for a technician to complete the work. Will this be enough? What is the probability that the average maintenance time X bar for 70 units exceeds 1.1 hours? Okay, so we're going to attack this one like we did before. We're going to write what we were given, and we're going to write what they're asking us to find. And then we're going to see if we can navigate through this. Okay, so I know that mu is one hour, and I know that the standard deviation is one hour. Now that is population information. But I have a sample of 70 units. The mean of this sample is the mean of the population, which is one hour, because X bar is an unbiased estimator of mu. I don't care what my sample size is. X bar is unbiased. The standard deviation of X bar is not one hour. Who is the gatekeeper for the standard deviation? That's your 10% condition. So I label, I write my formula, and I plug in my information. My sample size is 70. I already have that written right here. My sample size is 70. Okay, what's big in? Well, 70 what? 70 air conditioning units in this city? That's my sample. So my population has to include the word all. All air conditioning units we service in this city. Do you see how detail-oriented you have to be on what your population is? It's not air, all air conditioning units because I don't service all of them. This is only my information. So it's all air conditioning units that we service in this city because those 70 came from air conditioning units that we service in this city. That means that I have to service at least 700. We'll put a check mark by that. We just assume that that's true. So now I can come over here and I can find my sigma. I'm going to throw my formula in here. Plug in my numbers. You're going to type that into your calculator. And I got 0.12. I don't know why. I only went two decimal places. Okay, so it was 0.1195. So if I go three decimal places, he tells the 9 to go up. So that's going to kick him up that from a 19 to a 20. Okay, so I'm still going three decimal places, so I'm going to put that 0 there. Um, okay. Now, before you go draw a normal curve, there's nothing normal about this information. In fact, not only did it not say that it was normal, it said that it was strongly skewed right. So not only did it not say, hey, guess what, we're normal, it said, oh my gosh, we're, we're terribly not normal. Okay, so um, I can use uh, for normal, I can put a check mark and say CLT, Central Limit Theorem, because my sample size is bigger than 30. So even though it says, nope, you're not normal, I get to put a check mark here because the CLT swooped in and saved the day. The CLT says as long as your sample size is bigger than 30, if my sample size was 70, then I get to assume, not assume, I get to use a normal approximation 
for my sampling distribution. So I want the probability, let's see, what's the probability that the average maintenance time X bar for 70 units exceeds 1.1 hours. Now I need to define X bar average because of the bar time spent working on now is this on one unit X bar is the average that I worked on all 70 units so now I want X bar greater than a 1.1 Now before we define the variable x, this is defining variable x bar, which is the average, because that's what x bar is, of the time spent working on these 70 units. I can be normal because of the wonderful CLT. My average is a 1, 1 1.1, and I'm exceeding that, so I want to be bigger. I'm going from 1.1 to infinity. I've got a mean of 1 and a standard deviation where'd he go? of 1 of point 120. I'm going to type that in. Okay, now I'm going to read you my sentence and then I'm going to take the time to write it out. So just listen to it first and then we'll write it out together. If you budget 1.1 hours per unit, there is about a 20.2% chance that the technicians will not complete the work within the budgeted time. Again, I'm going back and I'm reading the question. If you budget 1.1 hours per unit, there is about a 20.2% chance the technicians will not complete the work within the budgeted time. Okay, I want to point one other thing out, and let's make sure you're super, super clear on this. So make sure you're good with this sentence. Hit pause if you need to finish the sentence. But then once you're done, let's talk about this. Okay, proportions are P p hat, and if you have a sampling distribution, mu sub p hat. Means are mu x bar, and if you have a sampling distribution, mu sub x bar. Standard deviation, Both of those require the 10% condition. Okay. Um, for proportions to be normal and for means to be normal are two totally different things. 
for proportions to be normal, think about it. That's your LCC. NP has to be greater than or equal to 10, and NQ has to be greater than or equal to 10. Now think about it. Why can't we use the LCC for means? Because the LCC uses P and Q. P's and Q's are proportions, not means. Now for means, we can be normal two different ways. If the population is normal, then any sample is normal. If the population is not normal, if it doesn't say that it's normal or if it says, hey, I'm not normal, then you have to use the CLT, the Central Limit Theorem. And it says that your sample size has to be greater than or equal to 30. But guys, if you're not population normal, and your or you're not sample size bigger than or equal to 30 then you can't be normal if you're mean so that's just a nice way to sort of divide um, the two days that we've covered and the similarities and the differences so spend some time on that homework watch details watch your communication with your statistics really focus on your notation really really check your answers don't sit there and do your homework with my answers right beside you that's not going to help do it on your own do a problem on your own then go check it then do another problem on your own and then go check it uh, looking at my work is going to make it look really really easy and you need to make sure that you can do this from scratch then when we do our test review, we'll put both of these types together, and you got to be able to bounce back and forth between the two. So let's make sure that we have them both very well, very solid individually, and then we'll put them together and practice.